All right, so there's a better, more automated way of laying out UVs. So with primitives, they come with predefined seams that make sense. So if I turn on texture border edges here, you'll see uh, this thing is sort of chopped out in a way that it could unfold easily. So just like we did on the last manual version. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn on the checker overlay. Again, you have to be in viewport 2.0 to be seeing this. You can see that these are not square, they're elongated. And these are really, really stretched. And the reason is, again, the aspect ratio of this face is not even close to the same, right? So this is quite thin and really wide, and this is a perfect square. So these are your default UVs. So instead of moving those around manually to try to match that up, the best way to do that is just to unfold it. The unfold tools are here, this little icon. If you right click it, you'll get the options pop up. For most things, unfold 3D is gonna be the best choice. Typically, you use the legacy mode when you only want to unfold in one direction or if unfold 3D doesn't give you the desired results. But typically, start with unfold 3D. So I'll go ahead and click apply and close. Oops, I gotta grab the UVs and apply. There we go. So all that did was flip it. Notice that that didn't pull any of the distortion out at all. This is a case where this is just falling, falling down a little bit short uh, of what we want it to do. So I'll go ahead and right click, choose the legacy mode. In this case, I'll start with the default options, which is no constraints. Basically, what unfold constraint is, it only allows it to move vertically or horizontally. And in some cases, that's preferred because you only need it to move one way to unfold properly. So I'm going to leave it at none and just say apply and close. And there you go. So now it has perfect UVs um, on the large size, I would say but uh, they are perfect UVs. So if I just run a layout on that, it'll all fit back down into the zero to one space, as you can see here. And that's my, uh, that would be my final layout for this piece. So again, your primitives are gonna come like this. I'll go ahead and just pop up a cylinder. You can see that this looks good. Again, I'll turn on the texture border edges. The caps have been removed and you have one seam here. Again, you can't unfold this unless it has a starting and ending point. If this was a piece of tape and it was all, or if this was taped together here, you couldn't unfold that to make it flat, right? You have to have a seam. So you gotta cut a seam somewhere and unfold it. This comes with good seams. Um, the end caps are already removed, but you can see there's a lot of stretching here. So I, again, I could either come in here and I could grab these and stretch them out to get that distortion pulled out, or I can simply unfold. Uh, so I'm going to right click again, switch back to Unfold 3D, click Apply, and there you go. So nice, clean uh, UVs on that now as well. But what about objects that don't have good default UV seams? So there are lots of different methods for creating UVs. They're under UV, and it goes from automatic to contour stretch here. Several of these are special case. So contour stretch, spherical, and cylindrical all have special cases where they're useful but they're not useful on a great deal of objects. And so I'm gonna leave those out. Um, they can be useful, but this workflow that I'm gonna show you with the planar projections tends to work on any type of object. So I'm gonna go ahead and pull out to the options here so you can see what's going on. And a planar projection can be aligned to any one of the world axes or the camera, uh, or you can set it to best plane, which allows Maya to select the plane uh, to try to project those faces. And basically, the way this works is, imagine that you have uh, a projection screen and a projector. And if you had the screen set up where it was an off angle to the projector, let's say we're looking straight down where the projector, then it's gonna hit here first, and then it's gonna spread out to here. So you're gonna end up with this keystone sort of effect like this. The things that are further away are gonna be spread out further, and it's gonna have a little bit of a smear going on to it. If you are exactly perpendicular to the face that you're trying to project, then you have a nice, clean, distortion-free projection. So in this case, we're looking down the Z axis. So I'll set this to Z. Make sure that it's on bounding box, keep image width and height ratio is on, click project. I'll turn on the checkers and you'll see that overlay that now shows us that these are nice and clean, they're perfect checkers. And if you look here, as it gets around to the top, let me just highlight some of these faces here. You can see where those are over here. So the reason they look smeared like this is they don't have any area over here in the UVs, right? It's a line. This, these faces that actually do have area are represented as a line. And that means that whatever pixel information is right here, it gets smeared along those faces. 
So that's the first projection, is you project it um, in, in one direction like that, and then you would have to come back and sort of break this up uh, with alternative projections. And I'll get into that method in a minute, but I just want to walk through uh, the other projection methods. So under UV, <clears throat> again, I'm going to skip these. Camera-based is essentially just a shortcut to this planar map with camera selected right here. So that's basically just a shortcut because it's, it's common to, to do that sort of projection. Uh, the best plane texturing tool don't use very often, so I'm going to leave that one alone as well. And I'm just going to cover automatic just so you can see how this works. Automatic is great at creating distortion-free UV shells. The problem is it tends to create a whole lot of shells. So as you can see here, this object gets broken up into more pieces than it actually needs. So if I were to come in here and show you, you can see there's a seam right here and another seam right here. Now if you had a piece of paper and you were trying to wrap this object, not going on to the front face or the back face, but just around this whole letter here, you could take one piece of paper and lay it on here without any wrinkles forming, right? So you'd have creases at the edges and stuff like that, but you could flow it around this fine, which indicates that you only really need one seam on this, and it could be any one of these seams could be left. Typically, you want to leave a seam at a strong angle and not in the middle of a, uh, a, a soft angle, something like this. So I would select all of these, and I'll just do this one at a time actually for clarity. So I'll select that one, and you can see that that selects here in the interface, are in the UV editor and over here as well. So that edge is selected here and here, and it's one here. And hopefully that makes sense because of the last video. And then I would choose Move and Sew. And that's going to take the little piece, and it's going to move it to the big piece over here. And now we don't have a seam there. And you can continue to do that. So just Move and Sew and put those pieces back together. So Automatic Map requires you, and you can do this, by the way, on multiple edges at once. You don't have to do them individually, So something like that. So now that would give me one strip, and I just double click that with UV mode and it selects the whole thing. So that would now give me one strip that looks pretty good. It's still distorted, still needs to be unfolded right here. But I had to go through the process of piecing that all back together, and then I still have to come back and unfold that. So uh, while Automatic Map is really good at creating distortion for UVs, there, this is not usable. You can't go to Photoshop and paint on this. I wouldn't know which part um, each one of these was uh, part of, like which letter they were aligned to, and it would be it would have seams all over the place. If I had any kind of texture on it, it wasn't just a solid color, and if it was just a solid color, why am I texturing it anyways? So whatever texture would be on here would have a lot of extra seams on it, so it requires that extra work of putting it back together. The method that I tend to use is a series of planar projections and then just cutting seams where they're needed. And I feel that this is the easiest approach because it's universal. It works on all objects. Sometimes if you have a really complex object, you're going to have to do a whole series of iterations of these things as you chop off little pieces. But the, the sequence of this is the important part, and it is universal. So the process is you go uh, and do a, a planar projection from the dominant direction. In this case, again, it's down the z-axis. So I'll go ahead and project that. So now I have no seams in my UVs. There are zero seams here. Then I'll do another projection on the faces that don't align to that initial projection. So in this case, I went to the side, and I made a selection of everything except for the front and back face. None of these align. These are parallel with the projection. So these all are really messy in terms of that initial projection. So I want to chop these off. So that's the that's step two. Make a selection of faces that don't work with that initial projection, and do a new projection on those. Alternatively, you can just do um, you can cut the seams out. But when you do a new projection and have faces selected, what it does is it cuts the border edges automatically. So I'll go ahead and show you that. So I'll do a planar map. In this case, I could use X or Y. Either one's going to work fine. I'll just use X. Project, and now you can see that there's a texture border edge around all of the front and back faces. So those have been cut free of the um, the other UV shell, right? So now I have individual shells uh, for all of these bands that go around. Then I just need to go in and cut one edge on each letter. Now, if you had compound letters that had an inner strip, so for instance an A or an O or an E, where there's an inside strip that's not connected to the outside, you need to cut one of those as well. So every strip was is going to need at least one seam. So with that one strip there, I'll just go ahead and cut that. There we go. 
And then we can try this uh, with the Unfold 3D. Sometimes this won't work, so I'll go ahead and give it a go. And this is somewhat common. Uh, this is what we get here. It just sort of messed up those letters and they just got all, uh, all ugly. So one way you could do this is just deselect those letters and let these run. So don't have those selected and run it. And that does a much better job. So you can see now these letters look correct, but I still have some weirdness. See the S as it stretches out has this weird curvature to it. Now this letter, if I look at this straight from the side, these are perfectly uh, parallel. These are planes that these are on. So I shouldn't have this sort of curvature happening here. So the Unfold 3D method just isn't working very well for this particular element. So the way that you would actually do this one is you would use the legacy mode and then pin this thing to only move vertically. And the reason I need to, I know that it needs to move vertically is if I look at this thing from the side, this is the direction I projected from, and I wanted to take this series of faces and flip it up along this edge right here, then that would only need to move vertically in the UV editor in order to make that happen. And so I set the constraint to vertical, click apply and close, and that will pull those strips out to make them perfect UVs. So the steps for unfolding any object are you select the object at the object level and do a planar projection from the object's dominant direction. So this will reset your UVs completely. You'll have no seams. Then you make a selection of faces that don't align with the first projection. And then you do a projection from the dominant direction of those faces. And that will split those off because you're doing a second projection at the face level. Those shells will be split apart from the other UV shells. After that, you need to look for places where you have to add seams to allow it to unfold. So think about a water bottle, the label that goes onto that, it has a starting and ending point so that it can go from a cylindrical 3D form back to a 2D flat plane. And every object's gonna have that. Another way you can think about this is imagine wrapping your object with wrapping paper. Any location that's gonna heavily bunch up or wrinkle is a place that you're likely gonna have to add a seam. After that, run the unfold command. Typically, you're gonna use Unfold 3D. It's gonna work best for most cases, but if you're just uh, unfolding in a single direction or if Unfold 3D sort of falls on its face or gives bad results, then you can go to Legacy. Uh, and if you have trouble, if this doesn't work, then you need to loop back to number four and uh, add some more seams until it does unfold properly. That's pretty much it. That should work for every object. If you have a very complex object, it's a good, there's a good possibility that you may have to do a couple of different um, individual face projections, but that's the sequence, and that should work for basically any object.